Hey guys, this is Matt with Block Imaging, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do a battery replacement on a generator of an OECC arm. Our system on here, uh, to make it easy for myself, I'm going to go ahead and raise my vertical column with, by pushing the up button, and then using a T20 Torx screwdriver, we're going to raise this rubber seal right here that's hiding two screws on each side, which I've already removed for easy access. Two on that side and then two on this side. Now that I have that removed, we can go ahead and power our system down, and then we'll go ahead and remove our interconnect cable. I like to have my cross arm positioned out in the out outermost portion to be able to give me a little more access as I remove this front cover. And then this cover where our interconnect cable goes, there's three screws located here, which I've already removed for ease. And that's gonna be exposing our steering shaft here with the knuckle. And then what you're going to want to have is a quarter inch Allen. Open up this access panel and there's three screws located inside here. We're going to want to loosen those up and remove them. Now I like to keep the screws in there just so I don't lose them. You can button that back up. Now where that knuckle is, we will need a 532nd Allen. And there's four screws located on there. We only need to loosen up the top two. And that should allow us to freely move our steering shaft from the knuckle. At that point, we can pull generator cover out. And that's gonna expose where our battery compartments are. You'll have two batteries. On the side here, on your capacitor module, you're gonna have where your batteries plug in. And there's gonna be a retainer with one screw that you will need a T20 Torx screwdriver for. Go ahead and remove that retainer. And you can unplug your batteries. While you're doing this, there is a circuit breaker on the underside that you should turn off. Now all four connections are just connected and we can go ahead and pull our batteries out. Now in this example, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the exact same batteries that we just had in there. What I like to do is I like to stand them up to check the lengths of my battery wires. The longer side is gonna go on your left cavity and the shorter side on your right. Now in between these two cavities, there's a pass-through hole that runs from this side over to this side in the very back corner. So what you're gonna have to do is take these two long connections and feed them through that hole to be able to pull through the other side. Once you have a hold on them, you can go ahead and put your battery back in here. Grab a hold of your connections and work on your right side. You're gonna go ahead and connect your blue red to your blue black wire. And this red wire that's already in the cavity from the left battery, you're gonna pull it back up through that hole where our retainer was. So with this particular battery, it has a shorter black lead. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and put some fish tape through this side to try and pull this wire through. Once you have it taped together, you can pull your battery back up in this compartment, slide it in, pull your wire through there. Then what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and connect your red connector on your battery passer module. plug in your black wire. Once you have those both plugged in, we can replace our retainer. Now that completes the physical installation of the batteries itself. Once you have the batteries replaced, you're going to have to remove this cover right here to expose our battery charging board. Once 
you have all the screws removed, you can remove the cover. Exposing our battery charger board. In this particular case, we have a blue battery charging board. There's also a green variety. They calibrate the exact same way. They just have different turn pot um, labels and the test point is located in a different spot. Now we can go ahead, reconnect our interconnect cable and power our system back up. Okay guys, now that we've taken this cover off, we've plugged our interconnect cable back in, we're gonna wanna go ahead and turn this circuit breaker on the bottom here that we turned off back on and then we can fully boot our system back up. Now with our system fully booted back up, we're gonna wanna take our voltmeter. So our test point on this green board is actually gonna be TP1 right here in the center on the far right side. And you can see it's set to 226.5. So what we're gonna wanna do now is our left turn pot down here. We're gonna wanna adjust this to 230. Once we have it set to 230, our light meter on the right hand side should have jumped to 230. And if it didn't, that's okay because it's set to 229.9. Now what we're gonna do is our turn pot on the right hand side, we're gonna adjust that so then our light bar drops from 230 to just clicks back over to 220. Now in this case, it didn't jump to 230, so we're gonna move it to 230. And then, once it's on our 230, we're gonna dial it back down until it just clicks to 220. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our lead on our voltmeter again, put it back on our TP1, and just it back down to 225 volts, plus or minus three volts. Now once you've done that, you can go ahead you can power your system off and you can replace all the covers. All right guys, that completes our battery replacement and our battery char charger board uh, calibration. Uh, this process can be done on a 9800, a 9900, and an OEC Elite. Questions, please drop a comment down below.